Does anyone else have anything around Rock? Can I compliment Hal Williams before you even get started? <laughs> How about this is scary. First, first of all, I'm, I'm the Holly of the Holly Theater. And Ann Emerson, years ago, had sent me uh, an email wanting to have lunch with me, and I said, that's fine, but I live in California. Can you send me a plane ticket? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we corresponded. I wrote an essay for the uh, book that she was writing about the Holly Theater, and I came for the book signing, and she graciously welcomed me into her home. Now, about Hal Williams. Okay. Hal Williams approached my mother, Mary Brammer, about the community by the Holly Theater. Uh, my mother did not let go of things very easily. I did, you know, when I would go home to visit, she'd check the trash and didn't like it, but I threw out some cottage cheese that was three months old. <laughs> but anyway, Hal went to talk to her about selling the theater to the community. And she actually trusted Hal because he had bought uh, the old Holly Theater location over on the square. That building was called the Price Building. Price Building. And he actually paid his mortgage on time. <laughs> and she was very impressed with that. So she knew he was trustworthy. And I love telling that story about how he talked my mother into selling the theater to the community. <laughs> close to 20 years, it was in bad shape, and Hal and a bunch of other volunteers got together and, and renovated it and raised money for it, and I thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, and for any of you that would like to loan me some money, I'll <laughs> Oh yeah, that's another story about Hal. First time I met Hal, coming from uh, California to visit, and I went into his, uh, uh, Christmas store, and I said, are you Hal Williams? And he says, well, that depends. Do I owe you any money? And I said, well, you do, but you paid up, Hal. <laughs> he was still paying the mortgage at that point, and my brother and I were, were sharing it. <laughs> Our feature presentation tonight <laughs> will be Hal Williams. Not for Hal. But some people might not know about Hal. This year was 50 on the big C, 50. Wow, that's a long time. Now, what you might not know about is Hal's retired military there, so you can only believe about half about what he's about to tell you there. He's like Matt Fisher. <laughs> I, I wouldn't give it that high a quotient. <laughs> I've known Hal for a few years, though. I know he's also made a couple of appearances in person A, Matthew Stevenson making speeches, rambling on the uh, balcony of the courthouse. But uh, you can tell you a little bit about the Holly Theater Night's history and some of the ongoing problems that they have, and maybe about shenanigans too, about what's going on with that. So I'll turn it over to Hal. Thank you. Well, I wasn't sure what kind of introduction I was going to get. I wasn't expecting all of that. <laughs> oh, mercy. I have been here 50 years this year. Uh, my wife and I came here as students at North Georgia College, fell in love, and got married uh, my junior year. And uh, this was our first home, and this is where we stayed. People would take bounce around the world, different reasons for the government, and so many things here and there. Um, you know you're approaching maturity, I guess, when they trot you out to do these kinds of things. You know? <laughs> Either that or you know where all the bodies are buried or, the, <laughs> or at least where, where the criminals are hiding. It's, um, it's somewhat intimidating to be sitting here in front of Holly Brennan and Ann Amerson and Sally uh, Sorhan, people who were very, very instrumental in one way or another with the Holly Theater over the years. Um, I don't know if y'all appreciate uh, some of the gems you have here. The Sally and uh, Larry, unbelievable <coughs> what they've done. As a matter of fact, when we first started doing the Holly, uh, 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 I was asking some folks, I said, I wonder I need to get involved. Well, Sally and Larry had just finished doing the library project at that point, and uh, Haynes Hill told me, he said, if you're going to get anybody on this, you got to get uh, Larry and Sally Sorhan in. Wasn't he the treasurer? Yes, he was. Well, 
Because you used to sign the checks that they sent in here. <laughs> and then uh, thank God for Ann Emerson. Uh, many of us have lived all this. Anne wrote it all down. <laughs> she writes it all down, and it's wonderful. And God love Kate Bray, who uh, was also very instrumental in, in this production. And uh, I told Anne when she came in the door, I was uh, sitting outside and reminiscing. Uh, and reread the book all the way through today. And for those of you who have never read the book, uh, I'm sure there's some in the library, but you can't buy one out of production. That's just wonderful. Maybe we can persuade somebody to reread it someday, Anne. Um, it's, uh, it seemed just like yesterday when I was reading some of those again. And, uh, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how I got into this. Uh, again, uh, being involved in history here, uh, most of you are here because you realize what a wonderful community this is. Uh, I found that out, and I'm, I promised Manny and, and Chris that I would address this subject early. I found that out when the Strickland House burned. Shenanigans. I'm very happy to report that we are moving forward with that project. Uh, we are one thin coat of paint away from proceeding further. We've uh, done a, a lot of things people don't even realize. Uh, if you blinked, you didn't see the roof go on and off. I mean, it was that quick. Uh, we had a great engineer and uh, architect and uh, uh, construction manager uh, Jim Combs and AFCOM are doing that and it's, it's going very very well and we hope to be open uh, we will be open uh, by October we got we got to get back to it so uh, you can all have a life again <laughs> the shenanigans will reopen and that's all good but I had the the, the great fortune uh, after Vietnam I came back here uh, was offered a, a job at the university as director of the student center and uh, before that even, lived downtown in Mechanicsville uh, and would walk back and forth to class every day and had the fortune of meeting some ladies who were very industriously involved in the project on the square. Just all kinds of things were happening around that old courthouse building. And that's where I met uh, Madeline Anthony and Amy Trout. Couldn't ask for any better uh, professors, if you will, in the subject of restoring uh, old Alonica. And it kind of got in my blood uh, when I came back. Um, we had the opportunity, uh, we had opened a business after leaving North Georgia and uh, had the opportunity to buy the Price Building, which I didn't know at that time, had not studied my history properly, was the original theater in the community. But uh, uh, Ms. Madeline, she, she took me under her wing and she wanted to make sure that we did it right. And we did the first uh, certified restoration of a building under the um, Department of Interior. As a matter of fact, I believe it's the only one that's ever been done in downtown Delonica on the Price Building itself. But uh, she was, uh, Miss Madeline was not so. <laughs> she, uh, she always called me Williams. Williams, you need to do it this way. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We did it that way, George. But, and I knew eight, nine, eight, nine. Head was a, she was quite a character. She was a missionary in Africa for many years, and her brother was a doctor here. I guess that means I'm approaching maturity. Uh, I'm not quite sure of that, but nonetheless. I said all that to, to let you know I've been around here for a while. Uh, even though I'm not from around here, my uh, great 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 grandparents were the uh, uh, miners who struck the old pigeon roost mine. And so my family was from here. And uh, uh, gold mining is in our history, and uh, I guess Delonica is in my blood, and uh, it's home, and darn proud of it. Uh, you can't ask for a better place. Talking about the Holly Theater, though, it's, uh, it, you know, all the world's a stage, and we're all actors upon it, and I guess my role was to play a role at the Holly Theater. The, the Holly, in the grand scope of things, uh, you've you heard the other night uh, or uh, previous talk about Ms. Lula Ash, who was a, a wonderful lady, and she really ran that theater uh, for Mr. Brandon when he was not around. Uh, you probably heard some of the stories out. And Mr. Brandon built the building. He actually came up here for years, uh, early on as a young man, and showed movies in the school, high school, which was right next door, up on the hill. 
and Ms. Ash was the uh, PTA director and they got together and ultimately Mr. Brandon didn't build the first theater here, but he bought that building which had been restored a couple of years previously in the uh, uh, late 20s uh, as a theater by another gentleman and it had gone into some uh, state of disrepair. He bought that building and restored it back to a, uh, a theater which seated about 300 people, which is about what we see now. Uh, I didn't know any of that when I bought the building. It was it had come back. Something is approaching what it originally looked like when it was built in 1897. But I guess you could say I've restored the Holly Theater twice <laughs> in the course of events here, and uh, maybe even a third time this, uh, are involved in in this most recent venture. It's very egotistical for me to say I, but I'm going to I'm going to take credit for only one part of this whole thing. The way the Holly in its new iteration came about was in the scope of things. We were going through a major downtown renovation. Dahlonega had begun to discover itself in the late '80s and early '90s with the advent of the Gold Museum as a tourist destination, and the only thing here to see was the Gold Museum and the Smith House, and that was it. Some of us had built buildings, or restored buildings, and we were opening shops, and people thought we were crazy for that. Um, and it was the time that, that people told me, and they all sounded that you were Sword Hills uh, Sergeant Hotel on the corner here. You guys are out of your mind. These old buildings, they need to be torn down. As a matter of fact, if it hadn't been for Ms. Madeline, that building that uh, uh, housed the courthouse, now the oldest courthouse in Georgia, would have been torn down and made into a parking lot by our city fathers. Same city fathers who burned, burned uh, the line of the laws in Vietnam. Uh, that's a whole other story we get into Sunday if you haven't heard that one. Nonetheless, uh, was sitting in my office, I was president of the, the Chamber of Commerce that year, so uh, I was the guy that got stuck with all the blame and very difficult if something went right. And we were in the middle of this whole renovation of downtown. New sidewalks, new walls, all of that. And in the course of this, the subject had come up in several meetings. It's a shame that we don't have something for people to do in the evenings here. This was prior to us having 17 restaurants on the square. There was not anything going on. I was sitting with a guy named Ron Simmons in my office at the Christmas shop. And I made that same utterance. I said, you know, it's a shame we don't have something to draw people and keep them here overnight. Uh, we had just gotten the word that the Holly was being considered to, to either be torn down or turned into a gymnasium or some such as that. Bowling alley. Bowling alley, something, you know. It was, it was all, all these crazy ideas were going for it. Come on in, Jim. You had missed anything. Uh, <laughs> At any rate, uh, and I made that comment to uh, Ron Simmons, and in essentially these words, he said, well, why don't you get off your butt and do something about it? And we were talking about the hour. So I thought about it for a day or two, and, I, and then I went over to see Cullen Larson, who was uh, the president of the paid professional uh, chamber, and I said, why don't we try it? I mean. You know, there, there are so many things lacking. We don't have any entertainment in the downtown district. We don't have another big issue, which we did not have any place for our kids to perform uh, chorus, band, any of that, or to be exposed to the performing arts. Okay, so we wrote a letter to 40 people. <coughs> in the new Lumpkin County Bank, uh, uh, where Southern Federal is now, uh, they had just opened and uh, they said, you can use our meeting room and we'll see if anybody shows up. We figured, you know, five or six people might show up and then it would all be good. All 40 people and their neighbors came. And it was like, it was just the right time. Uh, you know, there, by the grace of the good Lord, uh, the time had come. The Holly Theater, I didn't know it. I had been to shows there as a cadet. My wife and I dated there. So many, of them, I mean, it was the only show in town in, in the 60s. Uh, everybody was just 
had these wonderful memories of the holly. Okay, let's bring it back. Well, the idea they wanted was to bring it back as a movie show. Uh, well, and at that time, for many years, we showed movies and did very well with it. Until they invented Metroplexes and things of that nature. And that kind of was the death knell of the, the movies overall at the Holly. But we also got involved. Our very first opportunity was to do a mountain music night. And it was kind of a, a, a sad occasion, a positive occasion in, in many respects. It was our opening in 1993. It took us two years, and we'll talk about how we got there, but it took us two years to open this thing. But our very first offering at Valley Theater was a live performance. It was entertainment. Suddenly we were in the entertainment business. And we did that in memory of, uh, of a close friend, Rick Jones, who was the mayor of Delonga and had been killed um, just a month or so prior in an automobile accident. Well, that, that was kind of a quick two years, but let me tell you the down and dirty of that two years. We went to Holly's mom, and Guy Middleton gets a lot of credit to Holly uh, because he was with me, and Guy was our former you senator. You did it by yourself. Yeah, that's true. Problems, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think Guy did most of the talking. And uh, at any rate, your mom was gracious enough to say yes. So we bought the bill. Well, over a 20 something year period, it had been pretty much on again, off again, un and just it was shot to hell. Uh, the roof was leaking, the mold everywhere, the curtains, which had been a very rich brocade. We got some old pictures that, that uh, your dad really did it upright when he did it. It was a beautiful, beautiful theater inside. It, it was in really bad shape. So these 40 people and all their friends and everybody in the community came together and we spent nearly two years, when and Sally, emptying that thing out and cleaning it out and, and getting it to the point where we could get into it. And then we had to take all the seats out and we took them up to uh, above Toccoa, Georgia to be stripped and replaced. And those were the worst old seats. Oh, my oh, Lord. And, you know, you get a splinter in your dairy when you sit down. And, oh, man, it was, they, they, they were really, they were old-fashioned. And they weren't meant to see folks like me. They were meant for little skinny ladies to sit in. And I could just barely squeeze in one of those suckers. I did, I did, I, but we did it. I recognize, though, that the reason that a lot of this came together was because the emotion of theater. You know, I've been told uh, in working in downtown development for many years that if you don't have a, a community whose heart is vested in the arts, it's just going to fail. Well, this was kind of the kicker. Uh, this community's heart was vested in that theater. And so many things have come from it that we'll talk about in a moment. But the people came together. We had meetings after meetings after meetings of the folks in the community. What do you want to see done here? How should we do this? We'll bring it back as close to who it was as you possibly can. Uh, and, and it crossed the entire socioeconomic uh, boundary of the community. Our black community, had, they, they wanted to be involved because we had a very serious decision to make. In that theater, in the balcony, there used to be a wall. And the, in times of segregation, which many of y'all may remember, a lot of us were kind of on the border of some of that, the black folks couldn't go in the front door. They had to go in the side door behind the ticket window. That's what that door was for. And the Browns were pretty pro progressive in that regard because they didn't go into any theaters in the Atlanta area or anything like this, but there was a separate section called Color for the black community. And there was a wall that separated a part of the balcony that they could access there. And we got folks together and said, we want to know. And they said, tear it down. And by George, we enjoyed tearing that wall down. Um, and some of the stories you could tell, 
I think it was Versity Howard who was telling a story about a friend of uh, that they were cutting up in the uh, um, upstairs when uh, at some point and the friend fell off a balcony <laughs> into the, the bottom of land, don't suppose it. A lot of shenanigans went on up there. Uh, think about how many first kisses were shared in that balcony. Mercy. Boggles the mind sometimes, uh, the, the romance and all the, the uh, marriages that were uh, uh, generated out of those first dates out of the Holly Theater, that kind of thing. And we had another interesting thing. We had a lot of people who had gone to school here at North Georgia who remembered their first date. Haynes Hill talked about that often, and he and Carolyn had their very first date here. And I had friends, and I sent them a note, you know, we're restoring the old Holly Theater. And they said, have you gotten the pestilence out and the rats gone? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And, and yes, we've done that. Are the pigeons gone? Yes, the pigeons are gone. It, uh, all of that. We cleared it out, and by 1993, November the 6th, if my memory serves me correctly, we opened the Holly Theater, a labor of love. We didn't open the basement at that time, that was a whole other aspect, but we got the theater open. And it just began to grow, and it began to grow, and it began to grow. And one of the things that was always utmost in the minds of that original board was the involvement of the children of the community. We didn't realize how important that was going to be ultimately. But as I look back on it, some of my very fondest memories are the kids who are now 30, 40 years old, some of them who grew up in that theater who are professors of theater, who are teachers throughout the Southeast, or engineers, or any number of accomplished people. Because what it did, folks, it not only exposed these young people to the arts and gave them a place that the high school and the middle school could perform theater and band and chorus uh, concerts, for those who began to take part in the children's program, which we kind of came by by accident, but it was the best thing we ever did, they began to develop skills that would serve them throughout life. People who were not scared to get up in front of a body like this and address the body. I will never forget the first time we did It's a Wonderful Life, which is a great play. And I was talking to me about it. Chris, Jimmy Stewart made it famous in the movie. And I was sitting behind a teacher from the high school. And the young lady who was playing the lead, George's wife, she was just shaking her head in amazement. This teacher was, you know, she said, I cannot believe that she is doing this. Well, she was a high school student who was playing this role. And I finally leaned over and said, what are you talking about? She said, this child will not say a word in class. She has never, ever been able to stand up in class and recite or deliver a speech or anything of this. And she starred in this play. She went on to be a teacher. <laughs> It's just that kind of thing that has developed in that old building down there that we all love. It's a family. It is, in its truest form, a community theater. Why do I say that? Well, number one, we threw out an idea and the community said yes. And I'm talking about not just 40 people. I'm talking about hundreds of people who got involved, volunteered their time, volunteered their capital, volunteered all types of product to help build the building. The community wanted that theater. And over the years, 
we were able to deliver to the community a children's theater program now known as the Holly Performance Academy that was selected by Disney as the top children's program in the nation three years in a row. It is every year takes honors at the junior theater competitions throughout the nation. We have young people who are going to New York for competition uh, this year. We have had several young people who have gone to New York and at least one of whom walked right in and has played play the lead in a major Broadway production right out of the Holly Theater Company and right out of high school. That's phenomenal. For a little theater that originally seated 500 at a time when the entire population of the community, well, in 1964 when I came here, the population was 5,000 and that theater would seat 500. That shows you what an impact in the, th that the theater had in the community because it was the only thing that people had. It wasn't Walmart. You didn't see neighbors at Walmart. You saw them at the Holly Theater on Saturday night or Friday night or whenever there was a performance. That's what the Holly meant to people. It was their theater. Well, that went on and on for 20 odd years without interruption. Some of you know that there was a bit of a rough spot during the economic downturn uh, a couple, three years ago. And the community again said, we want our theater back. And there was a big meeting at uh, the community center and said, we would like some of you folks to come back who were originally there and some of the new folks, and let's put this thing back together and take the dead blank padlock off the door. That padlock was on the door for one week before the community said, no mas, that's it. We want our theater back. Well, I'm very proud to report to you, as Paul Harvey says, the rest of the story. Within six months of that new board coming on board, we had brought all the debt under control. We had, under the previous board, we had paid off the mortgage five years early. We are working very, very hard on the mortgage that was recreated uh, under the downturn of the economy. We are in the black, have been in the black for nearly three years now. And in addition to that, we have recently spent over $130,000 in physical improvements on the Holly Theater. When we first got the Holly, we couldn't afford to put a new roof on it. Uh, Haynes Hill, uh, Guy Middleton, Larry Sorhan, Hal Williams, and several other people were up there with tar and brushes and everything else, and we got a roofer to help us some and put, put down some roofing to stop up the holes, but there'd never been a new roof. As best we could tell <coughs> earlier this late, or late last year, yeah, it had not been re-roofed since 1948 when it was built. <laughs> it has now. There is a solid new roof on it. We have new sound equipment. For some of you who may have come from the most recent production of uh, uh, Smoke on the Mountain, uh, I was told by a professional actor and uh, sound person that they'd never heard better sound in the building. It's not supposed to be that way in that building. It's an interesting thing about that old building. Those are brick walls. You're supposed, it's supposed to sound like a tin can, but it doesn't. There's something special about that house that just makes everything better. And it's all because the community loves its theater, supports its theater. And we have gone so many strides forward with this theater. We are one of the top three community theaters in the state of Georgia. <laughs> the community theater, this community theater has won numerous awards from the Metropolitan Atlanta Theater Association and other uh, theater recognition and people want to come here and perform. 
We are no longer a local community theater. We are a regional community theater. I was in a production two years ago and we had actors from 13 counties driving here all the way from South Fulton County all the way up to Clayton and over to Gilmer County and uh, Fannin driving here just to be in production at the Holly Theater. People want to come and entertain you. What can you do to help? Well, the easy way is to buy a ticket. That's always a big help because nothing is more gratifying to people who are on stage than having people in the audience. Our concert series and our production series, which we produce in-house, the last seven productions over the last year and a half have been sold out for just about every show. We have sold out every concert in the past year and a half. Uh, yeah, we cut the seats back to 306, but that's to make it more comfortable for everybody. But a house that sees 300 people that sells out consistently is doing something right. It was kind of blessed somewhere by the gods of theater. So buy a ticket. Come support. We also need your help if you have a love of theater and want to get involved in anything. And there's so much. You don't have to get up on stage. We, we, we don't force anybody to get up on stage. But theater's a business, too. We have to pay the bills just like you do. If you have skills in marketing, if you have skills in greeting the public and would like to work in the office and just take ticket orders and help file and things of this nature, volunteer your time. And the way you can do that is go to hollytheater.com and go to community and there's a place there to volunteer. Now if you want to volunteer to work in the shows, there's an extra added benefit. <laughs> you see show freedom, which isn't bad either. Uh, and we have positions for ushers. That's pretty simple. We have folks that work in concessions. That's pretty simple. We have uh, folks that uh, sell tickets. That makes them, takes a little training, not much. And we clean up after the show is over. But you get to see the show free. You get to see your friends and neighbors. And you get to enjoy some good energy. Now, what's happened since the Holly <clears throat> developed? Well, the Holly was really the first adventure into entertainment in Dahlonega, if you get right down to it. We had a couple of things going on. We had a couple of coffee houses that uh, uh, folks played in from time to time. But in the course of events, decisions were made by companies like Burke River, you know, a Chasta. They were influenced in coming to Dahlonega and developing subdivisions. Contractors were in, uh, influenced to develop residential developments here because we had a theater and there was nighttime activity. Restaurants were influenced to come to Dahlonega because we had a theater and there was nighttime activity and the square was alive and things were happening. Other businesses, shenanigans, uh, crimson moon, things of this nature begin to develop really fine houses for showcasing entertainment. Then somebody discovered what many of us had kind of supposed for a long time, that wherever there was gold discovered, it seems that grapes grow. I have a theory on that. I can't prove it. Some of you who may be college professors can take issue with me, but I have a theory that wherever gold has been discovered, there's something in the ground which grows great grapes. <laughs> <laughs> we went here from here, from suddenly from Moonshine to Merlot, and <laughs> the wineries have come and added a whole other aspect to that. And you know, Folks who like wines come here and live because we're in wine country. Folks who like wine come here and stay overnight and spend money and uh, uh, 
Someone said earlier, Mary Lou said earlier, we're in the tourism business. That's what makes Delonica gold now. That's our new gold mine. And the wine industry began to grow. And I'm talking to those vineyard owners, a lot of their decision was made not only because of the agricultural factors that were involved, but also because there was supportive entertainment and infrastructure and life beyond the vineyard, which attracted their customers as well. So the Holly Theater is kind of a catalyst, and at least in my mind, and I think I can prove it pretty accurately, in developing what is happening in this new gold rush in Delonica. And with that, I'm going to shut up and let y'all ask any questions that you might have. Um, I don't know if I know all the answers, but... Uh, what was your favorite role on the stage that you played? <laughs> <laughs> you played a numerous play. Oh, Lord. I've been in 37 in Coons County. Uh, <laughs> I guess my favorite role overall, and I've had two. Uh, my favorite role overall was Chris Kringle in Miracle on 34th Street. I enjoyed doing that show. Chris Kringle, A Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, I also enjoyed playing Archie and Brigadoon a great deal. But, you know, that's one of those things. It's, it's just so much fun if, if you're an actor. And, and I, I do have to confess, I was an actor in high school and did a lot of that kind of thing. The Army didn't have any room for actors. Well, that's not exactly true. I acted, I acted like I wasn't scared and I acted like I knew what I was doing a lot of times, but beyond that, there wasn't much room for actors. But I'd gone away from that and Colleen Quigley kind of brought me back to the fold, if you will. I did not get involved in the theater uh, to do acting. Got involved in the theater purely from a, a, a business and a supportive uh, role for the community. Okay, Holly, what was your favorite? I think it was Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> <laughs> and you came down the aisle dressed as a hippie in tie-dyes with shoulder length hair. Actually, that was Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that wasn't bad. That was a lot of fun. I mean, it was like, I just... Yes, uh, <laughs> oh. Hal Williams is a hippie. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> also, he's been a, he's a, a super director when I was in Mockingbird. That was one of my favorite things. Right? We've done some, we've done some quality theater here. That particular production that Holly is talking about, Kill uh, uh, Mockingbird, which is. If you ever want a play that causes you to think, that's one. And we did some things in that show that had never been done before. Credit to Jamie Pambro, who I might add is currently directing Spamalot, which will open in July here. So Jamie came up with some things that just left the audience. And it was a great show to be in. Robbie, I saw him. Yeah, how many years did you show, or show movies? Let me think about that. Why really did it? Okay, that, and that's, that's a really good question, and thank you for answering, uh, asking that because we get asked it a lot. We showed movies for about 10 years. The kind of the death now, if you will, was started when the Metroplex opened in Dawsonville. Uh, it began to be very difficult to show first run shows. And we had to go to kind of what was generally a second run. You know, if it left Dawsonville, then we'd pick it up. That did not do well. Uh, we tried some art things, and that did not do so well either. When we reopened the Holly Theater after the uh, uh, economic downturn, we were asked to get back in the movie business. Well, another thing has happened, uh, it's kind of an insidious thing, if you will, that Hollywood has done to theaters. Everything now is digital. The cost for us, we had a, a benefactor who donated the several thousands of dollars that it cost to get new 35 millimeter projectors uh, some years ago, was extensive. 
the cost to change to digital going in was over a hundred thousand dollars. And if you do read USA Today and, and watch ABC News and some of those places, there have been a number of articles and news features on what is happening to the small town theaters. And most of them are going out. There are some that are surviving in a little bit larger markets, uh, doing some art things and uh, becoming beer pubs and things of that nature. But that was, that was not the way that we wanted to go. Uh, the Holly has been a family uh, environment since uh, 1990, and we wanted to keep it that way. We felt like our strength uh, is musical theater, uh, by and large, and our Holly Performance Academy uh, for the Children's Theater. And, you know, if you've got a good horse and it runs, bet on it. And that's, that's what we're doing. Yes, ma'am. How may I share? You How may. Please do. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, uh, one of the first uh, plays that was there was Driving Miss Daisy. And Larry directed it, and he he wanted to um, he wanted to do this. He um, Andy Wilson was um, uh, Bogey. What's his What was his name? The you know Booty Booty. Um, and we had a, a wonderful lady who was Daisy. And time kept getting closer and closer, and we didn't have hope. I said, Larry, you can't do this without a black hope. It won't be the same. So one day, it was one Sunday we were sitting there, and it was getting close to time for the show, uh, a couple of weeks away, and uh, Larry answered the phone, and the, the boy said, um, are you still going to do Driving Miss Daisy? And Larry said, yes, we are. He said, I'd kill to be Hoke. It was Don Mays. <laughs> Larry said he didn't even really know who Don Mays was, but he said he knew what, you know, from the voice. And he said, you're it. <laughs> that was the audition for, for Hoke and Driving Miss Daisy. Another thing that was cute about that production, which was, it was really neat, um, at the very beginning, there was a there was a uh, an accident, supposed to be a car accident. So they really didn't want to bring a car in and have an accident in the theater. <laughs> so my two boys, two Brian and Paul, got out in the driveway and they got some tin cans and some things that would spin around, and they recorded all this and it sounded really like a car accident <laughs> and so they played that that was the sound effects at the very beginning of the production also we as i say we didn't have a car up there but there was an imaginary car and every time hope went to open the door for miss daisy he would go over and this is i mean this is exactly what it was he would open the door, he would stand back, Daisy would get in, he would close the door. There is no door, uh, you know, this, oh. and he, and we had two benches. Don <laughs> sat in the front, he sat in the back. I mean, Daisy sat in, in the back. And he drove, no steering wheel, but this, and you used your imagination. And that was part, that was a wonderful part of this theater that people had to kind of use their imagination to fill in the blanks and it really made them a more part of the of the production i think you know in, in the end one other little story um one time i was there for something i don't remember what it was and at that time we sold popcorn and uh, drinks when we got up to leave i noticed in the front there was a lady in, in smoky and and uh, somebody had left a cup on the, on the floor. And she turned to them, it wasn't me, she turned to them and said, you have to pick that up and throw it away. This is our theater. <laughs> that was a real sense of community. It was just, it wasn't prompted, but there was a sense of community. This is my theater. 
and I, I don't know if she had, she just felt a part of it, I think. So that that community theater really did come through. So. Yeah, thank you for that segue. I do want to say one thing before I get out of here. Quit boring y'all. And that is this. Y'all are here tonight because obviously you're volunteers. You, you enjoy getting involved. Well, that's the nature of Delonica. That's one of the things that makes us the great community that it is. People volunteer, they get involved. You're involved with the uh, Historical Society. We invite you to become involved here. But a lot of my leadership training, I mean, all of it was courtesy of the United States Army. And I had a real smart team sergeant one time and he told me, he said, sir, getting the job done, accomplishing the mission is really simple. He said, pick the right man and let him do his job. Just check on him once in a while. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm gonna name some names. I already mentioned Mary and Sally Joe and Ann and uh, Amos, but people who made this successful were the people who got up and volunteered and came forward. And my only success was knowing when to get the heck out of the way. And we had people like Ann Wimpy and Pat Callahan and Bill Wingfield and Bill Mundy and Guy Chimbers and Gene Kinsler and so many, many others who gave hundreds of hours of their time. I could go on forever telling about people so many people who thought this is their theater. Well, folks, it's your theater too. We appreciate you helping to preserve it, help us spread the message. Come on down and volunteer. Come see a show and get involved. We're reorganizing on the 17th. If you have any skills in marketing and or um, fund development, we'd love to have you come down on the 17th at seven o'clock at the theater. We're reorganizing our, our marketing and fundraising committees, and we're looking for folks to get involved with that. I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much. For coming. Yeah. I think it's signed. Yes, it's signed. <laughs> yes, it's signed. It's made up now. That's a good thing. Yeah. Of her latest book, America's First Gold Rush, Delonica, Georgia. Cool. I haven't read it yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.